Good evening. I Rapstein with your spider ETF and stock video. I guess I could say that. And this is from Monday, the 4th of April, 2022. You know, the events that are going on in Ukraine are just unbelievable. If you look at the genocide, the war crimes, there's going to be moves at the UN, I guess, tomorrow to take Russia off certain committees. Remember, you can't kick Russia out of the UN. That's never going to happen. They have a veto. They can use it wherever they want and stop anything. But they can be kicked off commi committees. They can, believe it or not, be kicked out of the G20. I don't know why people think that can't happen, okay? It's a group. It's not a government. It's a group. If the group doesn't want you, you're not part of it. It's the G19. It's whatever it is. But things are getting worse, not better. You're seeing now that uh, they are talking in Europe of another round of sanctions. So is the U.S. President Biden again using the term war criminal. Couldn't be clearer about it. Okay. Careful this time not to say remove him from power. That is not what the heads of state do in talking about others. But war crimes, why not? That's what's going on here. And can he be tried? Absolutely. But you'd have to get him to try him, and he'd have to leave Russia, and that's not going to happen. So when we look at the markets, why don't we just get into them? And you can see on BITO, I had been telling you that I thought this market would fill this gap when I started covering it for you, and I'm going to drop it and bring out another market probably tomorrow. But look what you've done. So I feel that I've done my job in telling you, hey, I think you're going to pull back here, fill that gap, and then the game can begin. The trend is up, not down. You run into your resistance at the 100-day moving average of closes and the Bollinger Band, and you've corrected. But you could fall as low as 27.03 and still attract buying because the last break low was 26.31. Momentum-wise, however, you had a market that had embedded and then it lost the embedded reading. Watch. That embedded reading is lost today on the close. You have a 77 reading. I think the bulls came out. That doesn't mean they're bearish, but they come out of their longs because the odds favor that price and the 18-day average are going to make a run at each other. And that's what I think the smart money is looking for. When we take a look at AMC, do you recall when we were up just here? And I said, that's the sucker number. These people back here, they got higher on this time. And I couldn't believe people were buying this stock. I mean, you, to me, it was just plain stupidity. If you look at the fundamentals of a movie theater, I am sure that the owners will call me and tell me that that is changing. And I'd like to see it. Having owned one, I accept the fact that that could be the case, that it does change. And time does change things. And they get smarter in operating the business. But somebody saw what I did. And it, uh, the, against the 200-day average, they started hitting it. It was over the upper Bollinger Band, and the correction is underway. It's not in a downtrend. It is a great correction. It's only $13 or one-third of the price already. Point taken. Apple. I see this market now doing this. I don't think it's ready to mount an assault to the upside. I've got a pattern of a lower low, higher high, but it's embedded. Until that red line closes under 79, you get these breaks. What do you think I'm telling my traders in my morning subscriber to do? Bye. And that's what I've been telling them to do. XLF. You've got a market that has a higher high, lower low. Now, these are your financial select services. And you, you see that the curve yield, it inverted Friday. It stayed inverted today. It's two basis points over uh, the two over the 10-year. And, you know, if you can get a week of that, and that's what analysts look at. Can you get a, a week where you stay inverted? Then whether it pulls back or not, it inverted. And that sets off that time frame. I discussed this in my special video report. And I'm going to repeat. You can click up here to get into the report. Just click it, fill out the form, you'll go right to it. There's nothing else you'd have to do. I'll talk about it at the end of this uh, report as well. But it's because of the inversion and traders don't know what to do with it. I explain how inversions occur. I explain a filter you put on them, one you've never seen, to see are they real or not real. You want to view the report. I cover the daily, the monthly, the weekly, 
price counts and seasonal charts, and then I go into detail on this inversion and the filter on it. Then on Disney stock, you hit the upper band. What did I say when you got there? You're not embedded. That's where the pros take money off, and suddenly you're back at the 18-day average, but you're not trending. You have a lower and low, higher high. I've talked to two people, friends, that took their kids to Disney. They're, they're going and they're applying for loans. <laughs> <laughs> they were telling me how crazy. One of our people that works on our trade desk is a great guy, and he had a United flight back in order to be at work on time. They canceled the flight. They jumped in a car from what, Orlando and drove back to Chicago with the kids. Unbelievable. That, that's what you call liking your job. In XLI, higher high, lower low. There is no trend. What else happened here? Come on. Here's your embedded reading. Now you're going to lose it. You want to get that enhanced Pollinger band course and understand this. It all happened at one time. That's the difference. But normally you get a little bit of a lead. And now the market just has to work out of being overbought and decide what's its next trend. In the semiconductor, same thing. You had embedded readings. You lose them. That's it. You lost it this day. The odds favor you're going right back to the 18-day average of closes. You had an edge on the market. In the home builders, you've been bearish, but now I'm concerned. Are you going to embed? That could be. Uh, both numbers on this day are under 20. This was Friday. Today, both are under 20. It takes one more day, and that tells me on rallies, the pros are going to get aggressive in selling the home builders until that red line closes back over 21. In the energy sector, it's hard to want to be anything on the short side of energy, folks, regardless of the signal. We don't know what's going to happen to energy supplies out of Russia. They are demanding rubles. That, that is coming. Some countries have already said, listen, I have no choice. I got to pay you. I get 98% of my oil from you and my gas. I, I need to pay for it. So there are cracks taking place within the European Union. So far, not within NATO. But there's a difference between NATO and the European Union. You've always got to pay attention to that. GLD, still in the bear camp. It gets friendly if you get over 181.96. Barring that, you have lower lows, higher high. That's not a trend that I can see. Today in GDX and, and I believe Canadian gold miners, I was telling traders this morning and Friday, hey, you're up at the upper Bollinger Bands. You're not embedded. Wave goodbye if you've got a long position on in these trades. That doesn't mean I'm right, but that's what I was telling them. In the copper market, you're still embedded. Now, you don't see window envelopes. For those of you that get my full subscriptions, my morning subscriber video to these, there's another number here, and I was telling traders today, you might want to lighten up a little bit against that number, but don't give up your position. You can cut it down a little bit. TLT, okay. So we have a lower low, and then it started making this higher high. And with today's action, you're back into an uptrend, or are you? Not really. You closed under the 18-day average. The swing line is up. You have nothing on this chart. UUP, sideways action. I think you're caught in these bands without a trend right now, and I think the same is going to happen in FXE, not the place to be at this current time. So as I said, I spent a great part of today, because I haven't done one of these reports. I was looking back since well into last year, and now I'm going to be doing them on a regular basis, but not always on the S&P. I've got 40 different markets to cover, plus ETFs, and I'm going to be doing this. So I looked at the seasonal charts. I looked at our price count charts. I looked at the monthly, the daily, the weekly. Then I looked at the inversion that's taking place, right about that, and then a filter. I'm not going to give you the name of it. Read, don't read. You watch the report. So how do you watch it? Well, if you don't want to click up here, you write this down. Go to our website. Once you put it in your browser, go to the word research. You'll see under it the report. It's dated today. Click on it. Away you go. Can I make it easier? I'm Ira Epstein. See you tomorrow.